Hello and welcome everyone to another Minecraft video. So today I'm going to show you um, 10 tips that I've found really whilst playing Minecraft and these are things that maybe you don't know, maybe you do know but just stuff that really um, you would find um, useful when you are playing your Minecraft survival world or maybe even creative world, who knows. Um, before I do get into that, uh, make sure you do actually subscribe. Um, Unfortunately, there is no um, option whether to subscribe or not. You can only subscribe. Um, you'd actually find that I've hacked it, so you can like you actually have to press the subscribe button. But in all seriousness, um, as you can see, I have a small channel, and literally every subscriber makes me happy. Um, and you can always subscribe later or unsubscribe later if you want to. But you know, without further ado, let's get into the video, into my amazing um dark oak museum that I've built here for this video. Uh, with birch signs because there's no way you can read in a video dark oak signs uh, with dark writing so first of all let's talk about mob heights and here we have two hostile mobs that um, sometime or another you come across so the endermen and the wither skeleton now although they don't seem like it they are both three blocks high and what that means is um, they won't actually attack you or they can't attack you if I'm here and you can see I can jump in there and dilly dally with them you know how's it going um, but they won't be able to follow me even if I was in survival and that's because they are like I said three blocks high and this is useful so for endermen say you're in the end and you want to mine as if endstone you can just mine it in two block high pathways they can't do anything about it with the skeletons if you're in the other fortress you can you know put um, along the walkway two blocks um, so maybe like this uh, so you can walk through happily and they won't be able to follow you and you can also if you're super um, amazing you can make special with the skeleton farms which um, take into fact count the fact that they can see you um, when other mobs won't be able to um, maybe I'll make a video on that later I'm not too sure but that's um, tip number one tip number two is your own height and um, again you may see that um, we appear to be two blocks high, but we are just under two blocks high, and not only that, when we shift, we are more than um, under two blocks high. Now, I don't think this works in Bedrock Edition, so sorry, um, people who play Bedrock can play the better edition. Um, but what I like to do in my survival worlds is I like to have my villages in, well, maybe more space than this by like one block. Um, but um, I have them here, and they can't really go anywhere, and I can easily come in and out like I want. Um, I can say hi to them, etc. That's tip number two, very useful, especially if you want to have loads of villagers, which I advise you to do. Talking about villagers, let's talk about uh, zombie villagers. They are one of your most precious resources, um, if you know how to treat them right. Uh, and the special thing about him, well not him in particular, but zombie villagers in particular, is that they can um, be cured. And the more times you call them, the more um, discounts you get for your trading. This is again something I think that works differently in Java and Bedrock Edition, but I have made a tutorial about it. Um, this is currently my uh, most viewed video, and I might put a card up if um, I don't forget and if I'm not lazy. But I believe they made it so if you cure the zombie villager five times or something along those lines in Java Edition, you get huge, huge discounts. That is um, zombie villagers. Um, villagers also trade, as you know. But what many people don't know is that um, they can actually trade quite amazing stuff. So first of all, you have diamonds, but not diamonds, but diamond tools, diamond armor, anything that you want is that is diamond, you can get it. And if you do the um, curing thing with the zombie villagers, you can get them for one emerald. So you want a full set of diamond armor? That's four emeralds, thank you. It is literally as cheap as that. And that villager will also... Um, tell you or buy from you one iron for one emerald so from four iron you can transform that quite easily into a full set of diamond armor uh, but you do need to do some curing and stuff and like i said i have made a video about this you can also get ender pearls um especially useful for you know teleporting around but also making um, eyes of ender and finding strongholds bluestone if you're a builder and you don't like always having to find glue just buy it, quite simple. Cake. If you want cake. Um, making cake is quite a long process, getting buckets of milk, etc. 
you can buy it. Similarly with the golden carrots, I will talk about those more later. Saddles are a kind of precious resource, um, especially if you want to do horse reading stuff, etc. It can be nasty um, trying to get all those saddles from chests, but you can buy it. Enchanted books, and I believe literally every kind of enchanted book can be bought from villagers. Um, that includes stuff like mending, and again, you can uh, make special villagers' tools, and you can have villagers or librarians sell you a book of mending, which is very useful. And something else that you can buy from a villager is this, a name tag, and you should also take heed um, what the name tag says, as you can see. Um, this villager now, as you see, his name, and what's actually doing, you see him running around, he's actually searching for people who are watching but haven't subscribed, so um, make sure it doesn't find you. Anyway, so I talked about golden carrots, and well, when someone asks you what the best food source in Minecraft is, people would normally say steak, and those people are wrong. And there are two reasons for this. First of all, golden carrots provides better saturation. Now, it does only fill three hunger points, but those hunger points um, last longer. And because the saturation also means that they'll heal you more and you don't need to eat as much, etc. But the second reason is um, they're far easier to get. Once you've had a good villager trading system in place, one golden carrot for one emerald, and you can get emeralds quite easy by trading in huge amounts of stuff. And Otherwise, with the steak, you'd have to have a huge cow farm, they need to kill cows, they need to breed them again, they need to furnace it up, etc, etc. That's out of bother. Or you could just buy them, and they have better saturation anyway. Up to you, I mean, I know what I do in all my survival playthroughs, and um, I'm good at the game, so I know. But yeah, best food in my opinion, and as usual, my opinion is a correct opinion, so take that as you will. Talk about pets, um, and my opinion. Cats are also the best pet. Um, wolves and dogs in Minecraft, you know, they are cute and I like them, but I don't really like taking them out because I always think, oh, well, they might die, etc. Um, so I have them decorate um, the place. They don't really do much, but they're nice and cute, I suppose. But cats um, also have decorate the place and they do loads. So as you can see, the creepers, which are normally creepy, um, aren't creeping anyone. They're actually creeped by this cat here, which isn't creepy at all, but cute. And what you can do, you can strategically place them. So what I do, for example, I have them um, around the entrances to my house in my survival world. And that makes it creeper proof. So say, for example, I want to go into my house, but creeper has been chasing me quite sneakily. Um, yeah, it won't be entering because it's scared of the cat. And so I can enter my house quite safely and happily. So make sure you do tame cats and you breed them and you spread them around all over the place. They are a very useful resource to have. So tip number seven is automatic farming. So it might not seem it by these crops, but this villager, I believe I gave him if I gave him a bed, etc., would start um, farming this up. So he would pick up these crops and he would um, replace them with um, new crops. And what's also interesting is that if I had another villager here, for example, say I put this villager here and I put uh, a minecart with a hopper, then this villager would actually give excess crops to this villager. But because I have a minecart hopper, then that can um, grab that food that the villager is giving and um, go and go straight into my chest, which is quite nice. Now, there's also another tip I have for what you should be growing, and it should be carrots. Now, the reason for this is that if you're growing wheat, then the villager would um, have bread in their inventory, not wheat and not seeds. So eventually, if you keep it going long enough, um, the villager's inventory would be full of bread and not full of seeds, and then he can't obviously plant the bread. Um, you can also uh, give him beetroot, but that's not useful. Give him um, potatoes, but then there's always a chance he picks up poisonous potatoes. So again, eventually his um, inventory would be full of poisonous potatoes and he won't be able to plant anything. Um, not with carrots, you only get carrots when you harvest them and you don't turn them into anything else, so plant carrots. Oh, and also you can use them to breed villagers. I believe it is a total of six for two villagers, so if they both have three carrots in their breed and make a baby villager, 
there are obviously other conditions actually there's another one i think for java edition at least i don't know about bedrock is just another bed as well but yeah automatic farming by a villager you can have like huge setups of like towers um of villagers just farming along and giving you huge huge amounts of food so you should definitely do that oh no uh, he disappeared so anyway talk about farms um this is the best farm in my opinion this is the iron golem farm um again this differs a bit between java and bedrock iron golem farms in oh dear um, I'm going to farms. I don't know what happened to him either. In uh, Bedrock, are notoriously bad. Um, they are very inefficient. In Java, very different. You can get definitely with a simplish farm over a thousand iron an hour. I remember what I said about trading with villagers. Where did he go? Oh, he's there. Okay. Um, one iron for an emerald, which is a very, very good deal. And obviously, you can turn that emerald into huge amounts of stuff. So. Iron farms are amazing. They're not too hard to set up either. Maybe I'll make a tutorial on them. Actually, I already have one, but things have changed recently. So maybe I'll make another tutorial on making an iron farm as well. But they're definitely something you should invest in. But there's also a hidden secret to them as well. So essentially, iron golems are superbly tanky. And in a raid, they can easily take on an evoker with a ravager. And if you're making maybe 10 iron golems a minute, you can easily take away your killing mechanism you can just have those iron golems you know chill around your village when there's a radioing on and you can just sit and relax afk and the raid will be absolutely demolished by iron golems they are actually amazing at fighting raid monsters so if you're making an iron farm two things i would do first of all make sure it's close to a spawn chunk which is basically i think 16 chunks away from your spawn area and that means it'll be um, on even if you're away from the area so you can always be getting on even if you're far away but also make sure it's kind of around where around about where your village is so that means if there's a raid you can take away the killing things so for example lava you can just take put that in a bucket and then the iron golems will stroll out all happy until they see the raiders and they'll bash them up and it's all good so yeah I don't know where this iron golem went though, so that's a mystery. Okay, number nine is a glitch that um, I won't say I've found. Well, as in I've found, but I haven't like found it, found it. I saw someone use it. But this is the classic um, boat minecart trick with villagers. Now, what you need to do is put a boat here, villager, or another mob of your choice, could be a cow in here, and um, put a slope up, and then minecart, bam. Please work. It worked. Good, good. Obviously, the village is going to die because he's suffocating. But as you can see, this is a self-sufficient, um, self-appelling way of um, transporting villages. And villagers, villagers are especially annoying to transport. Um, but this is a nice way to do them, uh, to move them. Because you can easily put them into a boat and then you can transport them along to where you want them to go. So, for example, maybe up an area into your iron farm um is, when is he gonna die but yeah but one tip i do have especially when dealing with villagers if, is if you want to break the boat and you're in java edition use an axe and not a sword because otherwise you'll sweeping edge that guy out of the sky as i will demonstrate see i'm going to oh no there's also this glitch here where it moves but yeah so I'm going to try and break the boat. Mm. Oh no, he died. But actually do be careful though when breaking boats, etc. Because if you um, miss it, you can kill the villager. So yeah, that's tip number 9. Tip number 10 is literally just play the game and explore yourself. And explore the wiki, etc. And videos. That is how I got all these tips, by the way. Just from exploring, um, playing the game and watching videos and that's really what you should do in order to get good at the game so yeah i mean i suppose that's really it so thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this video kind of different but also hopefully useful as well and you can use these tips and tricks 
um, in your survival world or your creative world or to show off to your friends. Um, I can't do that for obvious reasons. Um, no friends me. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy and see you soon. Goodbye.